Paul Volcker, can the Fed stop inflation now? The short answer, no, they cannot. But most of you already knew that, but it's extremely important that you know why they can't stop inflation. And I'm gonna explain that to you in three simple fast steps. Step number one, we gotta go over the numbers. Chart going back to 1955, and it goes from 20% interest rates down to 0%. Of course, this is the Fed funds rate. It goes up, down, up, down. We get a peak back when Volcker crushed inflation. He took the Fed funds rate all the way up to 19.1%. Since that time, we've gone down, 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 down. And of course, we know we had almost 10 years of NERP and ZERP. Negative interest rate policy, zero interest rate policy. We creeped up a little bit, but now we're on the way back down at 1.5%. And I'd like to point out that the inflation rate, according to the government, the CPI, is 2% right now. According to shadow stats, if you measure it like they did when Volcker took rates up to 19%, our inflation rate would be close to 10%. Editor, throw up that chart of shadow stats. But most people forget what the inflation rate was, according to the government, back in 1980 and 81. What do you think it was? 30, 40, 50%? Right around 12.5%. My point is that it's not that much of a leap to get from 10% to 12% or even from 2% to 12.5%. And who is this individual, you may ask? Holding this wonderful sign that says, I heart central planning and wearing an FFF hat. Well, that of course is your friend and family member, Fred. And Fred is the guy that always tells you you're wearing a tinfoil hat for saying the Fed cannot stop inflation. Well, I wanna point out, there's one more tinfoil hatter that you guys might not know about. Editor, let's cut to the video. One of the things Paul Volcker said before he died is forget about using what I did in the 80s to fight inflation. That won't work anymore. So like we said the other day, your fellow tinfoil hatters include Stanley Druckenmiller, Jeff Gunlock, Ray Dalio, and now you can add Paul Volcker to that list. You're in some pretty good company, but let's get right back to those numbers. Most channels would tell you that the U.S. just can't afford higher interest rates, but we take it 10 steps further here so you can truly understand what's going on. This is a chart of U.S. GDP, and we've got to start with a couple givens. First and foremost, generally the U.S. collects 17% of GDP in tax receipts. Editor, go ahead and throw up that chart. And on a side note, one thing I'd like to point out about that chart is you can see that tax rates really don't affect tax revenues that much, but that's an entirely different video. Back in 1980, 30% debt to GDP. Today, almost 110% debt to GDP. So how does that play out in the numbers? Starting in 1970, we went off the gold standard. GDP starts really going up. That may look good, but keep in mind, that is in nominal terms, not adjusted for inflation. 1980, 2.7 trillion in GDP. Today, 21.5 trillion in GDP. Well, the debt back then was 810 billion. Today, 23 trillion. So the next question becomes, okay, well, how much money, how much revenue did the U.S. government have to service that debt? In 1980, 460 billion. Today, around 3.6 trillion. If you look at that in terms of a ratio, the debt compared to the revenue back in 1980 was about 1.76 times. Today, 6.38 times. And you may have all these numbers thrown at you and you're like, whoa, 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 time out. This, okay, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. Let's take things down to the household level and then it really becomes clear. This is you and your head is far larger than your body because your brain is of course so big. You make $50,000 a year and your debt 
is about 1.76 times what you make. So 88,000. Over here, we have friend and family member Fred. And of course, he has a huge body and a very, very small head because his brain is teeny. He makes the same $50,000 a year, but he has bought into everything the Keynesians at the central bank have sold him. They say spend, 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 more debt, more debt, more debt, and he has gone out and done just that. So he has $319,000 in debt. Well, if the Federal Reserve came in and jacked interest rates up to 19%, to squash inflation like Volcker did in 1980-81, his payments, his monthly payments, assuming that this is a 30-year mortgage, would go up to $5,000 per month or $60,000 a year, where your payments would go up to $1,400 a month or right around 16 grand per year. You can definitely afford $16,000 in mortgage payments per year. Friend and family member Fred cannot. He'd be $10,000 upside down just on his house payments. That shows you the position that the federal government is in today. And right about now, friend and family member Fred is saying, yeah, but the government can print their own money. That debt doesn't matter. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and look at consumer debt. This is a chart of household debt to GDP. Starts at 1980, goes to 2020. In 1980, it was 50%. So household debt was 50% of GDP. Today, it's between 120 and 80%. The measurements really vary, but we'll give the consumer the benefit of the doubt and say that it's 80%. Going back to our last chart, today we have 21.5 trillion in GDP, 1980, 2.7. So 50% of that 2.7 would be 1.35 trillion. 80% of the 21 would be 17.2. The population back then was 227 million, today 320. So we can say, just back of the napkin math here, that half of those adults are working age. So 113.5, 160 million. That would mean that the debt per worker in 1980 was $12,000. Today, $107,000. But of course, we are making more money today. But let's look at that. Editor, throw up a chart, please, of weekly pay. If we times this by 52, in 1980, they're making right about $15,600 per year. Today, $46,800. Sounds about right. So in 1980, they're actually making more per year than they had in debt. Today, they make less than half of their entire debt load. So how does that play out with 19 percent interest rates. And as a side note, I'd like to remind everyone that consumer spending is 70 percent of GDP. Let that sink in for a moment. Friend and family member Fred is really being stubborn today. He says, yeah, I get all that, but look at the stock market. It's at all-time highs. Well, if we look at a chart of corporate debt going back to 1980, it was 35% of GDP. Today, it's 45% of GDP. And that's according to the government's own numbers. If you look at a study by the IMF, they peg it at 75% of GDP. And one thing I want to point out that's interesting about these times, that when corporate debt gets to an all-time high, bad things tend to happen. And it's very cyclical. We get a big recession and the balance sheet improves and then that corporate debt just goes back up, 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 up. Another big recession back up, 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 up to where we are today. So what does that imply is going to happen next? But let's not worry about the fact that corporate debt is 10 to 40% higher than it was in 1980 because the corporations could be making a lot more profit. 
Well, in 1980, corporate profits were 8% of GDP. And today, 9% of GDP. Only 1% higher. An editor, throw up a chart of the market cap to GDP, and let's follow that up with a chart of the stock market going back to 1980. The market cap to GDP has gone through the roof and the stock market has increased by 3,000%. Yet corporate earnings as a percentage of GDP are almost identical. Let that one sink in for a while. Step number two, is inflation even possible today? Here's a chart of M2 money supply. 1980, it was 1.5 trillion. Today, it's 15.4 trillion. If we take the number of people that were in the United States in 1980, 227 million, and the number of people today, and we figure out how much money there is per person. In 1980, $6,600 roughly per person in the United States today, 48,000. The money supply per person has gone up over twice as fast as the rate of inflation. So what does that mean? Let me put it to you in very simple terms. Throughout the 1970s and into 1980, when we had the worst inflation in US history, there was this much money in the system to produce that inflation. Today, there's this much money in the system to produce inflation. So my answer to this question is yes. Step number three, what could be the cause of inflation and could we cure it? This is a chart of inflation going back to the 1970s. And it's extremely interesting in the fact that this isn't just the United States, it's all advanced economies. Starting in 1970, the inflation rate was 4%, going up to 16%. And throughout the 70s, the inflation was extremely high, just like it was in the United States. Well, how could that possibly be? You say, well, it's because the oil was so high. That can't be it, because if you look at the price of oil adjusted for inflation, you'll see that it's been that high, if not higher, several times since then. My hypothesis, is that inflation back in the 70s could have been a psychological phenomenon that just spread throughout the world, including Japan, which is the king of deflation. Editor, throw up a chart really quick of Japan back in the 1970s. They had shockingly high inflation. So when we went off the gold standard, I think the whole world saw that and had a loss of confidence in the currency. And that could have been what caused the inflation of the 1970s. So since it's a psychological phenomenon, or since it could be a psychological phenomenon, in my opinion, we could have that at any time in the developed economies today, because we know what the numbers are, we know that the potential for inflation is far greater than it was back in the 1970s. It's really a loss of confidence in the currency, the system, and the people in power making decisions. And we know what the cure is. It's these 19% interest rates like we had back in 1980 and 81. But I don't think that the cure is a component of just interest rates. See, I think that the cure has a psychological component to it that's just as, if not more, important. And what I mean by that is it would take someone with tremendous willpower that would be willing to do what's right at any cost, even if the entire world hated them for it. Can you imagine walking down the street, having people spit on you, yell profanities in your direction just because you took interest rates up to 19%. The bottom line is that takes guts. That, I think, is the cure that we are missing right now. Let me ask you a question. 
Do you think that these central bankers have the guts to do what this central banker did? A picture is worth a thousand words, isn't it? There's several reasons I think the Fed can't stop inflation now, but the main reason is because there was only one Paul Volcker. For more of this type of content, check out this playlist right here, and I will see you on the next video.